Hi there, Ron from RGM Music here, and uh, this week's topic is function switches for mastering the mastermind. Um, so function switches um, are distinct from external switches, which we talked about last time. Um, external switch ports allow you to connect additional buttons to the mastermind um, and, and have those control things on the mastermind, where function switches kind of work in the opposite. They are kind of like a remote foot switch for something else. Probably the best and most common example is uh, an amplifier, like a, an amplifier that has uh, multiple channels or foot switchable reverb or something like that. Um, it's fairly common to have an amp that has one or two button foot switch on it, um, just an analog you know, latching foot switch and uh, pressing those turn on and off features. Um, and there's, with, with the old school amps at least, there's no you know, way to control those normally. They don't have, you know, MIDI or anything like that. And so the only way you can change channels on them is press their button. So that's what a function switch is for. Um, on the uh, rear of the PBC6X and the LT, there's a single function switch jack. And on the rear of the PBC10, there are two. And each one of those can control a one or two button foot switch on the, uh, on the amp or other device. Um, and in the editor here, there's a function switch settings section on the uh, globals tab. And this one looks a lot similar to the, uh, the audio tab that we covered in an earlier episode. And um, we show our switches. There'll either be two for the PVC6X or the LT, and there'll be four for the PVC10. But each one um, lets you set a default state of whether the button should be on or off um, by default. And then there's this lock icon that lets you um, lock that switch in one place or another. Generally speaking, you'll leave these the way they are here. Um, the, uh, you know, you don't normally want them to be on or, or locked, but, you know, sometimes that, that may be necessary. There are a few other options below here, little check boxes that, uh, that will become uh, useful in certain cases. Um, for example, using the, the amp case, if you've got a two-channel amp and you plug it in to a PVC or LT and, um, you know, just see what happens. If you find that the, the uh, switch is kind of working the opposite of the way you want to, that is, for example, if you're, you have a, you know, clean, dirty channel switch, and when the switch is off, you would expect the, the amp to be on the clean channel, and when the switch is on, it's on the uh, dirty channel, um, but you find that it's actually the opposite, and when the switch is off, it's on the dirty channel, um, thus being, you know, opposite or inverted. And so you can turn on the uh, the invert checkbox here and that will invert the sense of the switch and so it'll it'll, you know, flip things back around to make things work the way you expect it to. Um, it's rare but some amps will require a momentary switch instead of a latching switch and you'll uh, find that to be the case if, or you'll find you'll find out if um, you use your switch and you find turning the amp on or off um, or turning the switch on or off will only uh, change the amp um, every other switch. Um, if, if that's the case, then um, turn on the momentary checkbox and um, then you'll end up with, uh, you know, again, having it work properly all of a sudden. Um, on only um, works in conjunction with momentary and this would make sense more on the PVC-10 with its multiple switches but there are certain like three channel amps where um, they use three momentary switches to select the three different channels. And if that's the case, you want to turn on momentary and on only. So when you switch from one channel to the other, um, it's going to switch the, um, say like when you switch from channel one to channel two, it will turn on the channel two switch briefly and then, uh, but it will not do anything with the channel one switch, which is turning off. Um, this, this will, uh, you know, in some cases will cause problems with the amp if, if basically the switch, the number one switch and the number two switch pulse at the same time, it'll confuse the amp. So getting that out of the way, um, well, okay, let me go over here real quick. Um, momentary time um, tells the switch um, you know, how long to turn on when it's set to momentary. So if, if momentary is on and um, you, you switch from on to off or off to on, what'll happen is that the switch will turn on, it'll wait 100 milliseconds, and then it'll turn off. And um, you can adjust this. This is a pretty good uh, time for most things, but sometimes a, a device might need a little longer 
to uh, to register the button press, but really probably should never need more than about 200 milliseconds. Okay, so now you've, let's say you've got this connected to your amp and you've set up your defaults. We'll just say that ours um, use the normal defaults here, which would be your, your average amp. Um, you can now program it for your presets. So you go to the presets tab and there's a little section down here that has your, your function switches. And basically, let's say, you know, preset one, we want our amp to be on the clean channel. Preset two, we want to be on the dirty channel. We click the arrow to override the default setting for the preset and we turn it on. Um, and let's say, let's say the second button is a uh, solo boost, it's a pretty common arrangement. And we could go for preset three, um, turn on the, the drive channel and uh, also override and turn on the uh, solo boost switch. And now that uh, PVC will, uh, you know, turn those things on as, as requested. Um, pretty simple. On the unit itself, um, there will be uh, buttons on the switches page, um, like on, for example, on the uh, PBC 6X here. Um, switches is page three. It's accessed on the uh, on the actual device by pressing this button here, the function button, twice, and it'll switch first press to loops and second press to switches. And then these two buttons here, function switch one and function switch two. Um, will will uh, manually control the function switches, and um, you can you can um, program them here as well. But the the settings over here override the settings over here. So really, when you're doing your uh, your presets, you'll see that um, when we turn them on over here, the the buttons turn on automatically. And so um, yeah, you can turn them on here, but but when you're setting up presets, you should use these buttons. But if you're on the device itself and you're programming, um, what you can do is you know, select a preset on the first page, come over to switches, um, turn on the function switches as desired, and then hold um, this button, which is the hold function is IA store. And so when you hold it for three seconds, it'll save any changes made to any of these buttons um, to the current preset. And that includes the function switches. And on all the, uh, on both PVCs and the uh, LT, the, the the function switch buttons are labeled. Um, there's a little FNSW off to the side of each button that controls function switches um, when in the switches page. So another thing you can do with function switches is control tap tempo on certain analog pedals. Um, you know, tap tempo is normally associated with pedals that have MIDI capability, but some of them have a quarter inch external uh, tap jack, which is designed to have a, uh, you know, momentary switch connected to it and or some other kind of switch and uh, so basically the function switch can do that for you so you can manually tap from the PVC and control the pedal or even uh, basically have automatic uh, tempo changes from the PVC um, where it uh, does the uh, moves the function switch for you and uh, you know passes that on to the uh, the pedal um, we'll talk about uh, tap tempo in, in much more detail in a future video, but for now we'll just talk about the basic setup. All right, so here in the buttons tab, let's take the, uh, we'll, we'll use the external switch here, but this will be, you know, you can use any button and this will work the same on any, any of the masterminds. So we'll just open this up, double click, and the first thing we want to do is turn on flash with tempo. Actually, the first thing we want to do is set it to IA. It needs to be an IA, instant access button. And we set flash with tempo. And now we want to um, turn off everything except for update state on preset change. And um, this is, well, it's a long story. Um, but basically, if we want the tempo button to uh, act like a tempo button and actually flash when we start tapping it, we need these two settings on. Again, more in a future video. So now we have it, we can call this tempo if we like. And we have to add one action to the button. And that action is a, an audio function switch action. And we're gonna set the number to function switch number one. And so that's basically it. When we tap the button, it's going to turn the function switch on and off. Um, and also, because flash with tempo is on, the system will start flashing at the uh, flashing this button at the tempo rate that you uh, that you had tapped in. 
and then the pedal will act effectively as if you um, had tapped its own tap tempo button on there and it should um, you know follow along and going back to global here we'll go to the global tab and there is a uh, show tempo option here and if we have that turned on as you start tapping it will um, show the the tempo that it's calculated from your taps um, now when you're doing this um, you would just when with the pedal you wouldn't you will have to check the uh, the rate and make sure you've got things set right. If your tempo happens to be off by say like you know half or double, um, you may need to go in and change the function switch settings. Um, the first one you'd want to try is the momentary setting and turn that on or off. And um, less likely but possible, you may need to turn on the invert setting. But some combination of momentary and invert should give you uh, a correct tempo when you when you tap it out. As for connections, it's real simple, just a single quarter inch cable from the function switch jack to the uh, external or the the tap jack on the on the pedal um, on a PVC 6X or an LT. You have one jack you can work with and so you can control one external pedal and on a PVC 10 you have two so you can control two external pedals and if you wanted to go and uh, do that for both pedals at the same time we can certainly do that. We can go new action and add another audio function switch action. And the first switch on the second jack is number three. If you recall, you know, switches one and two are on the first jack and three and four are on the second. So now we've got simultaneous control of tap tempo on both of those pedals. Um, other things that, uh, like especially on the Strymon pedals, um, they have a favorite switch on the smaller ones. And that just lets you switch between sort of the current knob settings and a, a preset setting for the for the pedal, and so um, that works through the same port on the uh, on the back. You can either use it for tap tempo or for favorite switch. Um, you can again just use a single quarter inch um, cable from the function switch and into the the uh, favorite switch jack, and then function switch one would uh, turn the favorite switch on and off. Um, if I recall correctly, that's inverted. So when the switch is off, favorite is on. So you might want to go over here and turn on the invert checkbox. Now, one thing I get asked all the time is, you know, we have two function switches on the same jack. Can I split this off to go to separate pedals? Um, that's, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the quick answer is not recommended. Um, however, in certain cases you could. Um, one case that I, well, the only case that I've tested it and I'm, and I'm reasonably sure, or certainly in our testing, we've encountered no problems is with the Strymon pedals. Um, basically, we could use a quarter inch insert cable that has a TRS plug on the Mastermind side and then two quarter inch plugs on the pedal side. And I have tested that with two of the Strymon pedals and then connected the PVC to the uh, the uh, favorite inputs on on both of those pedals, and then function switch or yeah function switch one would select uh, the favorite on the first pedal, and function switch two would select um, favorite on the second pedal. Now this is a dicey thing with just a an unknown pedal because um, basically you're you're electrically connecting those jacks together from one pedal to the other, and not all of them would may like that. Um, if you have a voltmeter and you're, you're handy with such things, you could, um, you could do a, a test to make sure that it's actually, um, safe. And what I would do is on both pedals, like plug a cable into the audio input and plug a cable into the, uh, tap input and, or favorite input, and then measure, um, the resistance between the grounds of each one of those, um, of each one of those pedals, um, you know, based measuring from the, the opposite ends of the cables. And um, it should read, you know, zero volt or zero ohms, excuse me, or close to it. And that just says that the, the jacks share the same ground. Um, this makes them, uh, you know, electrically compatible and, and tying them together would be okay. As long as both pedals you're connecting have that same ground connection between their audio ground and their, um, and their, uh, function switch input ground. 
Now, that said, there still may be a chance of developing a ground loop by doing this, and you won't know until you try it. You know, it's, that's not anything dangerous. It's just going to cause hum. And so if you, you know, try splitting your uh, function switch jack to two pedals and you all of a sudden get hum that goes away when you unplug it, then you're out of luck and you can only control one of those two pedals. So that is function switches in a nutshell. Um, that, uh, that should hopefully get you started. Um, again, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the tap tempo um, situation in, in more detail very soon. Um, thanks as always. Please like and subscribe. And as always, we uh, welcome your questions and comments. And uh, please post them below. Thanks so much.